Grizzled leaf monkey. Hello. Welcome to the second day of Animal Acts. Even silenced phones will disrupt our audio equipment. So, please, turn your cell phones completely off. Now. We're about to see an excerpt of Deke Weaver's Monkey, Thank You for Coming. Go. Good day. This afternoon, we're going to hear some stories. They're all a little bit different, but they're all a little bit the same. I guess you could say they're related. <clears throat> Let's start with some pictures. The mouse lemur from Madagascar, possibly the smallest of the primates, fits in the palm of your hand. Human being, Homo sapiens. This one's 5 foot 11, 185 pounds. We don't know when he'll die, but on average, he'll live to be about 75. The gorilla. This one weighs 900 pounds, and as you can see, it takes 21 men to carry him. The howler monkey, almost entirely arboreal. The howler is the loudest animal in the new world. Hanuman. Hanuman is an incarnation of Shiva, a magic monkey able to transform himself, make himself smaller than the mouse lemur, and thousands of times larger and stronger than the biggest gorilla. The monkey king, born out of rock, trapped under a mountain for 500 years, able to transform himself into 72 different creatures traveled with a monk, a pig, and a sea monster into the West. Many primates learn by watching and imitating. Monkey see, monkey do. A network of tiny electrodes was implanted into the motor cortex of a monkey's brain. With the monkey's own arms restrained, he was able to control a robotic arm and feed himself. Monkey think, monkey do. Tools can be thought of as extensions of the body. Tools make you stronger. Tools make you faster. Early humans used complex tools made of stone, bone, antler, and ivory. They wore personal ornaments. They buried their dead with rituals. They played bird bone flutes. They were avid hunters able to take down large and dangerous game. Sometimes humans used monkeys as tools. During the Southern Song Dynasty in the battle between the rebels and the Chinese Imperial Army, Monkeys were clothed in straw, dipped in oil, set on fire, and released into the enemy camp. The panicked monkeys, burning alive, set tents ablaze, and drove the camp into chaos. See no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. The three wise monkeys were Mizuru, who sees no evil, Kikazuru, who hears no evil, and Iwazuru, who speaks no evil. Sometimes a fourth monkey was depicted, Shizuru does no evil. He was shown covering his crotch. In the era of the great warships, the days of sails, cannons, and scurvy, they had to find a way to stack the cannonballs so they wouldn't roll overboard. A device known as a monkey was invented. The monkey was a flat square tray made of brass set directly into the deck of the ship. Indentations held the balls which were stacked in a pyramid. At times, Naval strategy required the ships to sail through Arctic waters. At 40, 50, 60 below zero, the world changes. Trees steam. Spit freezes before it hits the ground. Everything is white and metal contracts. Some metals more than others. The brass of the monkey would contract more than the cannonballs. The balls would roll overboard and all the sailors would say to each other, Arr, a shiver me timbers. It's cold enough to freeze the balls off a brass monkey. How about another story? Here's a story about traps. There's all kinds of traps. Booby traps, deadfall traps, mouse traps, speed traps, sand traps, welfare traps. Sometimes you don't even know you're in a trap, and then if you finally figure it out, well, it's probably too late. How about a monkey trap? Here's the basic idea. 
A hunter digs a hole. Hunter puts something delicious in the hole, something the monkey can't resist. The monkey smells the delicious thing, finds the hole, puts his hand in the hole and grabs the treat. But here's the deal. When the monkey tries to pull his fist out of the hole, he can't. The hole is too small. His fist is too big. And so the monkey has to make a choice. Now, wherever you have monkeys, you have this sort of trap all over the world. You got the South Indian monkey trap, the Malaysian monkey trap. You got monkey traps in the Congo River, monkey traps in the Amazon River. The treat in the trap? Well, it might be sweet rice, fruit, a nut, something shiny. The trap itself might be a hole in the ground or a gourd. Maybe it's a wooden box. The monkey could be a howler monkey or a spider monkey or a, a macaque. But that's just monkeys, right? I mean, sure, as far as animals go, they're pretty smart. They got opposable thumbs. Some have uh, prehensile tails. The kids hang out with the mom for a long time. But they're not apes. Now you see apes. Apes are smart. With apes, you got gorillas, orangutans, bonobos, chimpanzees. You and I, us humans, you heard this yesterday. We know this. We share 99% of our genetic material with chimps. Apes can learn language. Apes can use tools. Apes are really smart compared to monkeys. Apes are super monkeys. And humans are super apes. And gods are superhuman. Now, I like to think that most of us aspire to the superhuman end of the scale, but come on. Everybody's got their monkey moments. And that's why the monkey trap metaphor is used by all kinds of folks. Priests, shrinks, military analysts, investment bankers. And the moral of the story, this story told all over the world, this story with its interchangeable but basically similar components. The moral of the story is this. Don't be greedy. Open your hand. Let go of the treasure. You can't have it all. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by the company with coverage for everyone. The greatest name in health insurance, Mutual of Omaha. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. The ways of the wild may seem strange to us because we've never seen them before, or because we don't understand them, or because they're so odd that we can scarcely believe them. Now, would you believe, for example, that a chimpanzee such as Mr. Moak, star performer of the chimpanzee show here at the St. Louis Zoo, is uh, ticklish and will laugh out loud.
was an army of monkeys. They were known as the Barbary Apes, but in truth, they were macaques, a type of monkey. Their faces are pink, their fur is brown. They live to the age of 22. They make their home in Morocco, the Atlas Mountains of Algeria, and Gibraltar. Like Gibraltar, these monkeys exist between worlds, balanced on the cusp of the East, the West, and Africa. Legend has it that as long as the Barbary Apes roam the Rock of Gibraltar, the territory will remain safely under British rule. In 1944, with British morale battered by the war and the Rock's monkey population dwindling, Churchill took no chances. He ordered a shipment of Barbary apes from Morocco, a short hop across the strait. Sixty years later, in 2003, Britain, the United States, and a coalition of nations were poised to invade Iraq. The Kingdom of Morocco allegedly supported the coalition by offering 2,000 Barbary apes trained to defuse landmines. These fearless monkeys, dwelling between night and day at the edge of the world, the stuff of prophecy, an elite army of magic monkeys. And magic they must be. Only 2,000 Barbary apes remain on our planet. Yet every single one of them volunteer to serve in this primate army. Where does their power come from? Who is their leader?